Okay, today we are back with Presley Vineyards at Bokish Vineyards and a winery, and we are going to be pressing all the grapes that we harvested with them in our last episode. If you guys missed the last episode with Presley Vineyards, I'll put a link above and in the description so you guys can check that out. And uh, here's stage two. Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Tara, a farmer from Northern California, and this channel is mainly about farming, but sometimes it's not. And today, we are going on a field trip. Oh, Hi. Hey. <laughs> Alcohol, what else did you say? Aldehydes, Aldehydes, ethers, ethers, oh, yeah. esters. Is it all natural and, stuff, and or is it stuff that's been added in? No, it, it, all the smells are natural. Yeah. Um, natural stuff. And it's and it, there's you know there's probably some there's definitely some a little bit of CO2 left, some methane, some sulfur. <laughs> it's strong. How's it smell in there? Okay. You're used to it. it smells good. So this is all the grape skins. Yep. So it's been sitting in here for how long? So they just pumped it down. Okay. So the juice is now in the is the free run, and then this goes into the press. But how long was the juice has been in here? Oh, we picked two weeks ago. I think it was about two weeks ago. Two weeks. So. So we're here to see it all get pressed. It finished fermentation like three days ago. Okay. And then just sat on the skins and... and now we're ready for the next step. How's it going, Charlie? He's got a ways to go. So we've got all the skins that just came out of the tank and they're getting dumped into the press. Danger zone. <laughs> A little harder to get out than in. Got a fold, babe. <laughs> Got a fold. Got a fold. Yeah. yeah, we're going to. Let's watch Daddy get You're out not going to try to go out that hole, are you? Babe? Are you having a hard time hearing? What? <laughs> Dad is going to get dirty and come out. Say, come on out. Ooh, scaring baby Jay. Baby Jay? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Wow. Look at that. that was so beautiful. That was. Very Good graceful. Job. All right. We're here. We're ready to rock and roll. Huh, Tommy? Are yeah. you ready? It's like, yeah, whatever. We just, or I didn't, I just supervised all of the grapes getting dumped. Went great. Perfect. <laughs> Are you gunning for a job too? Because I'll hire them. <laughs> right now, I can take all the help I can get. Okay, so this is the press. Can you can you introduce yourself first? Because I don't think I got you in video at all last time. Yeah, I don't think you did. Okay. I'm Elise Perry. I'm the winemaker here at Bofish Vineyards, and I am the winemaker for Presley Vineyards. Yes, so she helps them out a lot. And we kind of talked about that, yep. how she helps you yep. and stuff like that. She guides us. Guides you. Mm -hmm. I'm a consulting She's our winemaker. consulting. Yes, okay, so do you want to explain what's happening now? Sure. Um, so the grapes have gone through primary fermentation. Um, so we now have wine. Uh, and what we did was we drained the tank first of all of that what we call free run wine. It's all that wine that's just 
ready to go. That went into a tank. We dug out what was left of the grapes uh, in tank, so they're pretty squished at that point. Uh, and we dumped them into the press, and we're pressing out the rest of the wine that's inside of those grapes. Okay, so can you explain what we're smelling? Because I feel like it's a very strong smell. <laughs> uh, well, if you had smell a vision it would be great. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, so you're getting a lot of... Uh, Burning my nose a little bit, like I feel like I might have just taken like a shot of something. It's a little, <laughs> you're definitely getting some of the alcohol there. Okay. Uh, there's still some carbon dioxide in those grapes, so you're getting okay. a little bit of a shot of carbon dioxide. Okay. And then you're just getting all of those aromatics that are coming out, and, and this happens to be a really nice, bright Pinot Noir. So okay. You've got some really nice, bright uh, red fruit aromas happening. Yeah, and we have our assistant winemaker here, Tommy, Tommy Hamilton. Who's also, maker, huh? who's also got his GoPro. Let me see your camera. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what's coming out. Oh, can you explain how it works? So this is So the grapes get dumped up there. I was just up there, they get dumped in, and then how do we get the juice out? So inside this big drum is a ladder that gets inflated by air. That's what you're hearing right now is air getting the pushed from a compressor the into wine. that vehicle. It blows it up and it squeezes those grapes against the, the side wall and they're slats and so then you get the, yeah, the wine one. coming down uh, through those slats so it's a continuing press and it builds pressure over time. Okay. Um, so you get you squeeze harder and harder okay. and harder. How do you know when to cut it off? Does this start I, looking different? Smell? I taste? Think. So taste. I'm constantly tasting oh, okay. throughout the entire process to decide. So you're just getting this good stuff right yep. here. Wow and eventually it'll taste a certain way and that's how you'll know when it's ready. Yes. Okay. So you can, I don't know if you can see, maybe not, there's like little slits there and it's all coming through. What do you think, does it look good? Mm -hmm. Yeah? <laughs> I think he prefers the whole berry. So you can see all the little slits in the side. So like she said, the bladder is pushing them up against there. And there's the juice. Okay, so you can see all the slits are on the top now. So it just rotated. I'm assuming the bladder is shrinking down and I'm assuming it's gonna rotate again and then the bladder is gonna blow up inside again. So let's see if that's what happens. It's getting all those grape skins and everything in there loosened up and moving around. It's actually spinning a lot more than I was expecting. But obviously the bladder kind of smushes everything to the side. This gets it loosened up. Looks like we're going at it again. Okay, so last time in the last video we put all the wine and the skin, or not wine, the juice and the skins and everything in there. Yep. So since that day until today when you were taking it all out, what has happened? Do you want to be in on this? So what we have done is it got, it sat for three days cold okay. soaking. So, so it just sat there. Yeah, we didn't inoculate. It was sitting there just trying to get more color into the, into the wine, right? Okay. Developing better color. And then it gets inoculated and then we slowly start tracking the What does inoculated mean? With a yeast. Okay. So with the yeast that we're going to do. Added yeast. Added yeast. Added yeast to it. Okay. Yeah. And so we add yeast and then we are... Um, yeah, at that time we were at least pumping over twice a day. Twice a day. So call it in the morning and call it in the afternoon to kind of reintegrate. So the skins will float to the top because you're having a release of like CO2 and just a lot of gases are starting to release because it's an active fermentation. Okay. And so you're trying to reduce the temperature at a certain temp on reds and then reintegrate um, the juice back on top of the skins. Okay. And they also take a sample every day and test for the sugars to see how the sugars are coming down. Okay. Yeah. Because okay. Because you're basically- Oh, right, because you 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 guys said you go till zero. Correct. Right, yeah, so, so you're testing the sugar every day. Yeah, see where it's got. Okay. Yeah, so say you start off at 24 bricks, you end up at 14% um, percent alcohol. And so okay. what you're tracking it is how, because you want to have that, the wine, what they say is going dry. Okay. So no more residual sugar left. Okay. 
So once that goes dry, then you know you're done mm -hmm. and fermentation's over. Yeah. Okay, and then you said it finished fermenting a couple days ago? Yes. Yeah. So is it hurting it, sitting it in, like mm -hmm. being in there a few extra days before you press it? It's not like you got There's still enough gas yeah. that's holding it. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Okay, so we've got the press down there and I, we have a hose here that's, that's coming out of the pump. Pumping but so, from the tray that's down there, yeah, right? Yeah, so pumping out of the tray okay. and coming up the line. Okay. And, and it will go right into a tank. Into that tank. Yep, and it'll settle out within about 24 to 48 hours. Okay. And then from that tank, it will go into barrel. So you're settling oh, everything down. so it's gonna down. be in there just for a day or two. Yeah. yeah. And then from there, it's gonna go into a barrel. Then you'll right. go down into a barrel. Okay. Um, okay, so their cab is in here. It has your name on it. Oh, it's beautiful. So there we go, Presley Vineyards, 2019 cab. So that's from last year. So we're in the barrel room, which is always like so cool to me. All the barrels. So we can see we have our rosé is here. Okay, so the rosé is in metal? Yes, it's stainless steel. steel. Stainless steel. Yes. Um, is there a reason for that? Or is it just- The flavor profile that we like. The flavor yeah. profile. Mm -hmm. okay. It creates, it creates a Cleaner, crisper um, white wine. wine. Yeah, as well, opposed like, to as opposed to a um, an oak style like Chardonnay. Okay. Um, this creates a nice crisp. Come here, dude. Wine. Come look what we're looking at over here. Come on. What have you got? What have you got there? Grapes. Grapes. <laughs> How long does the rosé stay in? We'll bottle in January. And when did it go in there, though? It went in there in Beginning August. August. Yeah, so okay. eight months or so. It's okay. pretty quick. Yeah. And then the cab was 2019, so right. that's how long does that stay in there? So it's kind of up to Charlie and I on what we want it to, Mama, like how it's tasty. Right now we're talking Mama, about bottling Mama, maybe next Mama, May, but we'll make that decision once we Mama, actually Mama, taste, continue to taste it and see okay. if it's got to the point we want it to be it'll, pro it'll probably be about that 16 to 18 month mark by the okay. time we get to it. Like what our red just went through is in tank it did primary fermentation. Same with the white, you press it, get off the skin, and you go through primary fermentation here and then whites are done. Okay. So once it goes from the red up to that tank, it will sit and settle, and then it goes into barrel where it gets inoculated for malolactic fermentation. Okay, okay. And then uh, then there, so that's its secondary fermentation, and then after that, it's done. And okay. And it sits and ages in barrel, and then once it gets enough age time and oak integration, then you decide when you need to bottle it, and then from there, it will bottle age for so many more months. Okay, so what's gonna be the next thing you bottle? Like the soonest thing? Is so we'll do, this? yeah, the rosé and the rose the, uh, our Albarino bottle in January. In January. Yes. And that will be the mobile bottling that hopefully I can yep. come to. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That will be really cool to see. Yes. So we're going to taste the rosé now. Yes. That we were just looking at a minute ago. I must not be on my own <laughs> so, so what, okay, so for people that don't know, what is, what goes into rosé? Like there's not a rosé grape, no. right? No. You know, like right. if someone knows nothing about rosé, what is, what goes into rosé? Pinot Noir. Yeah, so this is our Pinot. That's it? That's it. Pinot Noir. Occasionally, depending on how it's tasting, at least we'll, um, we'll blend it with a little something, like we've done Grenache in the past, mm -hmm. um, also a red grape. Okay. Um, but yeah, so Pinot Noir is a red grape. Yes. And so how does it end up pink? It comes into the winery and we um, let it sit on the skins for, what do we do? 12 hours, 24 hours this year. Um, and so it gives it this nice, okay buddy, it gives us this nice little pink yeah, hue. We'll do it this one bit. looks very like peachy color. Yes. It is, and it's a little cloudy right now because it just finished fermentation about two weeks ago. And on the nose here, you get like a lot of like like those acid, like grapefruit. It tastes really good. Citrus, yeah. a lot of citrus like notes are on the nose. Um, it's just super nice. Elise is a rosé wizard. <gasps> rosé wizard. And it's the hardest for it's me. It's the hardest to make. I like it. So Tommy. Yeah. So Let's we have then. So this was picked for rosé. Picked then, for rosé. And then we have some of our saignée, which when we bring in our pinot, we bleed off some juice to help increase color okay. in our red wine. Okay. But some of this percentage of juice that we have will barrel it down 
and that will help infuse more color into some of the rosé where you see it's a little bit lighter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this see? is the Sanyan. Oh, yes. Okay. So beautiful color. Wow. That is beautiful. So we'll so add that will help with the color of this. Yeah, yeah, and it can also help with like the flavor profile if like you want to have a little more full body, you know, like we were talking on the barrel. Yeah. So it has different flavor profiles than the wine that you're going to get out of the stainless steel. Okay. okay, so this is all the grapes that just came out of the press. Yeah, yep. pumice. All pressed. What's it called? Pumice? Pumice. pumice. Mm -hmm. So what now happens with all this? Mm, so like this will now get reincorporated back into the vineyard. Is it going to go back to your vineyard? No, it will probably stay out here in pumice. Okay. And this but, is, is it just going to go like in the roadways or does no, it, go, no. does it get like, what you know, does it have anything special? So or they this, just toss this, it out there? This winery, they'll, they'll have it spread it out through uh, just a normal uh, oh. Amendment spreader, and okay. then they'll disc it in. What do you think, Tommy? Yep. Good. You like it? Fun. Yep. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Sustainability at work. Yep, that's right. Sustainability. You guys are sustainable. Lodi rules. Lodi rules. Sustainable. That's sustainable farming, right? Sustainably certified. Yeah. Okay. Sustainability is um, farming in a way that preserves it for like future generations to come in and be able to farm because we set up set up for them. You know, yeah. to okay. Be able to it's for it's looking at the holistic view, like Brittany yeah. said. It's you know, it needs to be, everything needs to be economical for the grower, and it needs to be, try the best, the best possible situation for the environment that it's situated in. Yeah. Um, and does it say sustainable on your bottle anywhere? Yeah. Or yeah. is there any way for seal. people to know? Okay, there's yeah. a seal. Yeah, yeah, on okay. the back of our uh, wine on the label, it has a, the Lodi Rules uh, sustainable seal on it. Okay, because I think I've seen it on the website. Yeah. Okay, there's the whole, Hamilton family. <laughs>